865 Sports. So how about this doozy? What in the world's going on in Houston? Chris Pesman is out. Joseph Duarte with the uh, pretty ominous text or tweet last night. Joseph Duarte saying that Chris Pesman is out as athletic director. Now, I talked to a couple of people today that cover Houston. Uh, uh, It was not a great time when we're on this afternoon for them to come on the air. But here's part of what he said. This was, he's out as AD. We had Chris Pesman on three to five times since back when the, uh, the discussion about the 2021 season of how the Big 12 would react. Source telling the Houston Chronicle, Duarte, that top levels of the University of Houston administration had become frustrated with A.D. Pesman's inability to make significant progress to increase revenue through sponsorships, fundraising, and it was a consensus decision to make the change. Now, Duarte also saying that this completely caught Pesman off guard. He was not expecting this decision or was not expecting to be released, and I'm not sure if that means that he didn't have any kind of heads up. Sounds like he didn't. And so there we are with Chris Pesman, friend of the show. Wish him the best. I'm not sure Houston right now has had some turmoil at the top of the AD department. They will now start the search, a nationwide search, as their president said, to find the replacement for Chris Pesman. Meanwhile, the Utah AD, now a part of the Big 12 or will be officially on July the 1st, has been added to the U.S. Olympic Committee's uh, 2028 committee uh, for uh, a couple of different things. One, uh, it's, we got it, Mark Harlan has been appointed to the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee's Collegiate Advisory Council, a six-year term. Nice deal for uh, uh, Mark Harlan, and he now will have that on top of what he's doing for Utah as they celebrate on July the 1st, the entry into the Big 12. And then you hear about there's no money. All this $22 million revenue, this salary cap, whatever you want to call it. And yet Oklahoma today has given Brent Venables a new contract. He's 14-10 and 10 in his two years at Oklahoma. But he gets a new deal. Uh, and here it is, Oklahoma, six-year deal. Uh, extends him by two years out into the SEC entry. Oklahoma has ESPN's number seven recruiting class. Okay, uh, this is uh, interesting uh, because, you know, you, you, the, the departments all go, we don't have any money. How are we going to do this? And yet Brent Venables is 14 and 10. Now, listen, I'm not saying OU's doing something wrong here. Only they will have to figure that out. But here's the Eli, Eli Letterman added this. And, oh, by the way, Pat Smith is about to join us. He was at that, again, game last night at Rickman Field, and also thoughts on the SEC. The deal approved by the Oklahoma Board of Regents is contracted in Norman through 2029 on a new deal worth just over $46 million. Venables will earn $7.225 million before his salary climbs to $7.625 to eventually $7.925. And then I didn't get a chance to, to get it or peel it off because we were trying to get ourselves set for the show and in between the power outage. But it even could be about $8.1 million based on some other parts of his contract. So there we are with that. A&M, the Mike Elko contract, the football coach at, at, at Texas A&M, who is, by the way, they're in the College World Series, best of three that starts tomorrow up in Omaha. Uh, he has, a, a, I guess, an agreement in his contract that based on the landscape of college sports, A&M and Mike Elko could renegotiate his deal. That clause is included in a six-year, $42 million contract that Elko recently signed with Texas A&M. If the financial model for college athletics dramatically changes, when I first read that, I don't know about you, Garrett, or anyone else, when I first read that, I'm like, okay, can they downsize his contract? It because if they're going to have to put more money elsewhere, would, is there an agreement, and he knew about it, that they might have to possibly change what they're paying him? I can't imagine his agent would ever agree to something like that. No, but I also think at this point, coaches are starting to see the writing on the wall, and I think you're going to see more coaches put things in place like this where they can restructure their uh, their contract <clears throat> to, or maybe put a clause in my contract saying out of whatever X million I'm getting paid, I would like to donate or refer um, 
100000 200000 into an NIL budget or something like that. I think you're going to see more of that kind of approach uh, with these going forward. And kind of like with the, the, the Chris Pesman thing, like that's real unique because – this is a guy who played there. I mean, he lettered at Houston. And I also think that's kind of like a a, a, thing, a change in the tide where we're seeing these admin hires like your mark, right? Like they're going out and getting these business guys. I wonder if more of the schools, or you're going to see a, a shift from a traditional approach to hire an athletic director to more of a finance type mindset to come in to try to counterbalance, especially in some of these smaller conferences where you're so far behind from a, a budget standpoint compared to like the big 10 or the sec. It's all about yeah, money. It's all about it, money. It, even if you have the money, even if you're one of the alphas, yeah. you still are looking uh, to find more ways to get the money. So those are some of the stories, but one note, former A&M running back and great Darren Lewis, the all time leading rusher in Texas A&M history. He passed away. Saw that note earlier today from Brent Zerneman who covers A&M for the Houston Chronicle. Uh, I, I got a chance to interview him a couple of different times. A very nice, quiet, humble player, but he passed away. He was the all-time leading rusher for Texas A&M, and that is a, a sad note for Aggies everywhere and also for college football fans. All right, let's go ahead. 